Mm. Hello, I'm April Levine Garrett, and this is Amplify Baltimore. While some argue if we're even in a recession at this moment, many of us are trying to figure out ways to be more fiscally responsible. With that in mind, we are here in Charles Village at the PNC branch on 25th Street with Annie Spain, branch manager and financial educator. Annie, thank you so much for being with us. Oh, it's my pleasure, April. Thanks for being here. In a city that has mm -hmm. so many financial deserts, why is PNC committed to financial education? Well, one of the things, April, is that PNC is very committed uh, to individuals, their quality of life, and financial education is a very important key because we want everyone to be successful in today's time. That is PNC's commitment, and it's my commitment as well. What are some of the unique ways you're reaching out to non-traditional customers? Non-traditional clients, one of the things that we want to do is we want to ensure that everyone gets a second chance. Mm. Our goal is to get individuals away from the check cashing institutions, mm. uh, to get uh, individuals away from the money orders. Mm. Uh, so what we do is we conduct these uh, financial classes just for these individuals. And not only that, April, it helps them to save money. Right. And it also helps them to feel good about themselves and to help them to feel secure, to make them secure for the future. So the bank has really said we are committed to putting resources behind meeting the needs of those populations that would traditionally not even be bankable. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. And some of these pockets would include uh, places like uh, Prisoner's Aid, at Jacob's Well, Ways to Work, uh, just to name a few. Uh, there's a desperate need, and that's why I feel that PNC, in, especially in the Charles Village community, we reach out to help these individuals because our goal again is to make them to become financially secure. So Annie, you've given us a lot of information, but tell us what are the three areas one should master to ensure financial success? I think the most important area would be checking, mm. uh, partnered with the savings. Uh, many of the individuals are not successful with their savings plan simply because they just don't understand it. And that's our goal is to teach and to help them, uh, to educate them in that area. The second important piece is budgeting simply because uh, knowing how to manage what you have, taking the overflow of monies, getting yourself incorporated in a budgeting plan is very important, and also to understanding credit. Why is knowing your credit score so important? Credit score is very important. Uh, many of our customers don't understand the credit. Uh, one of the things that we do here at Charles Village, we will even help our customers to actually show them how to, to pull their credit report, mm -hmm. and we will even bring them in, uh, mm -hmm. since it is a private matter on oh, a sure. one -on one Mm -hmm. to educate them on the credit. In many cases, we even help them to uh, contact some of these individuals so that we can help them to clean up their That's credit. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, additionally, April, what we do is uh, we help individuals. We, sh we show them how they can actually create a savings account mm -hmm. for the purpose of taking care of those obligations oh, on your credit. Perfect. Because we know deep down, we want to see everybody into a home. Sure. Home ownership is very important. Mm -hmm. um, but to get there, you need to be able to manage what you have. That's why these classes are so important to us. You've given us great information today, but how can the general public access what PNC has to offer? Well, April, a couple of ways. They could actually walk inside the branch, and of course we can provide this with this information. But what we recommend is that they actually attend one of our classes. Okay, tell me a little bit more about your class. I okay. see you have this Foundations yes. of Money Management booklet. Oh, I love this booklet. Yeah, it's it's the found Foundations of Money Management class, uh -huh. and what we do is the third Thursday of every month uh, from 2 to 4.30, mm -hmm. we deliver this class. Uh, in many cases, we have individuals that have actually walked in to mm -hmm. open up a checking account, mm -hmm. and because of them being unbankable, mm -hmm. we recommend this class, so we naturally enroll them mm -hmm. in the class. They could also call uh, call this branch out at Charles Village, 410-235-4612, okay. uh, right. and uh, just ask for any of my teammates, and what we can do is we can enroll them in the class. That is fantastic. Yeah, so we make ourselves very available. Wonderful. Well, you've given us lots to think about today yeah. with regard to getting our financial house in order. Yeah. I'm excited that PNC has made a commitment to Baltimore to help the people of Baltimore live more financially vibrant and successful lives. Yeah. And we can't thank you enough for all that you do to Aww. amplify Baltimore. It's my pleasure, April. Thanks for being here. Thanks.
I'm a big fan of the Bon Secours Family Support Center, and I'm very happy to be here today with Althea saunders Renier, who is the director of Our Money Place. Althea, thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Tell us about the good work you do here at Our Money Place for the residents of South Baltimore and in Baltimore at large, actually. The mission of Our Money Place is to help uh, residents uh, achieve financial self-sufficiency. Uh, the goal of Our Money Place is to give low-cost, affordable, free financial services to those who qualify. How did this initiative come about? Well, this initiative came about with uh, collaboration of uh, our ORSWA, Operation Reach Out Southwest, which is the community coalition here in Southwest Baltimore, Bon Secours Health System. Uh, what they were looking at is they put together a SNAP plan which included six uh, specific areas, economic development being one. Can you clarify what SNAP is for our audience? Uh, that was a plan to um, help revitalize Southwest Baltimore. Okay. Uh, it includes housing, education, open space, mm -hmm. health, education, and economic development. Mm -hmm. Uh, so my goal, when I came on board, a part of what I do is to uh, assist with the economic development. And one of the things the community wanted to do was bring a bank back to the community. Uh, as you know, in modern and low-income neighborhoods, um, banks don't often stay for credit unions because uh, they don't believe there's a lot of business here. Uh, and developing products and services that are good for the community is uh, oftentimes more costly than maybe more affluent neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And so um, with the help of Operation Reach Out Southwest and uh, Bon Secours Health System and Community Works, uh, we got together and um, brought about our money place. Why would your clients come to our money place as opposed to a traditional bank or credit union? One reason they'd come here, families find that um, there's not a whole lot of understanding of financial services. Mm -hmm. And so coming here brings them with the comfortability. They get into relationships with us here and we're able to really give awareness around helping them to build assets and grow wealth. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is that um, our money place was created so that families could have an option in terms of high cost services that they uh, traditionally were receiving in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of emphasis is placed on uh, financial education, financial literacy, really bringing awareness to families around how to manage their money. Who are your primary clients? Well, our primary clients are moderate, low income, uh, mostly African Americans, uh, and what we're seeing uh, an expansion in terms of our client base, not just African Americans, because with the economic downturn, as you know, has affected many families across the board. And so modern low income folks still come here um, so that we can help them with the services that they need. Plus this is, uh, for some it's free, and for others it's a low cost, affordable option, and that's the thing we really try to get out to families. We want them to know that there are alternatives uh, out here in the marketplace for them where they can get quality uh, financial services with a resource that they can depend on and come back to from time and time. How can people get in touch with you? Well, if you're interested in coming, um, as, as you may know, uh, one of our, our major services that Our Money Place provides is tax preparation. Mm -hmm. And for six weeks during the tax season, uh, we prepare taxes for free. Individuals interested in financial services can call 410-362-3445. Thank you for offering low-cost financial services to the people of Baltimore. And thank you for profiling us today. Next, we'll talk to another member of the Our Money Place family. I'm with Loretta Johnson, West Baltimore native and our Money Place family member. Loretta, thanks for being with us. And thank you for having me. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. How did you hear about our Money Place? Well, I was um, shopping um, at Westside Shopping Center Mall and I ran to Miss Althea, but I'm always at the bank. So okay. my thing is I like to save and I like to shop. And, Wait a minute, um, how do those two things even? They, they can't accord right. because she showed me how when it's like tax time and she would send me letters out to the home and she would let me know when it's time to do my taxes and she, she always say well she takes me on the side I say Loretta you know you need to save you know you're raising two grannies and you need to save right so my thing is I have been saving mm -hmm. and I can finally put the sure that I don't have to go out 
mm. and just go and buy because I have. I buy when I need. So you said that you met her at Westside Shopping Center. Why did you choose Our Money Place to get your financial services as opposed to a traditional bank or a credit union? Because I'm, uh, really, I'm affiliated with um, Barna Secor. I get all my health here. Mm. Um, I've been dealing with Barna Secor ever since I was 18. Mm. And my doctor um, is located on the grounds also. Okay. So when I met Ms. Althea, I was like um, in low income housing. Mm. And also, I wanted to get my GED. Mm -hmm. So she pushed me along. And she pushed me along where she said, well, she said, Renna, you get your job, and you can do so on and so forth, and I'll help you this place and that step and the next step. So she really actually helped me to finance everything, to um, reassure that, that I would have money at the end of my journey to spend, you know, instead of just taking it all and just spend it all at once. She said, you're gonna have to do one step at a time. You're gonna have to learn how to save. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been doing. I've been saving. And every time I save, I might put in like 100, I might put in 200. Um, tax time, when it's tax time, she said, well, I'll try to get you much as possible. Mm -hmm. And that's mainly what they do. They really try to help the community. So you're getting your health needs met, sure. you're dealing with other family issues, and you're getting that met, and then you're also getting financial services. So it Absolutely. became a one-stop shop for you. Absolutely. What are Money Place services have you found most helpful? Um, I found our SSA credit union was very helpful because when I came here and when I first started out with the taxes and so forth, uh, Mrs. Rainier, at the time, she were offering that assistance. She said, well, I'll set your account up. I'll get you going. But she said, she always said, Loretta, she said, I'm going to show you how to finance everything. Uh -huh. And she really did. And when they, they were over West Side Shopping Center, it was closer to me because from me living in the neighborhood in, zone, in the west side of Baltimore, it was it was more like a walking distance right. or it was travel through bus. Right. So it really was convenient for me. And it was convenient because I didn't see a lot of um, interest or anything taken out, you know, mm -hmm. when it was time for me to go to the bank or to put money in or to take money out. Okay. So that was, that was the wonderful thing about it. Clearly you would recommend Our Money Place to other folks. So tell us why. Because I would recommend it because it's very helpful because we have a lot of programs. We have a lot of things to offer in the community. Well, so Bono Secor also help everyone in the community. So whether you insured, unsured, uh, money-wise, housing-wise, um, bg and &E, I mean the whole nine yards, taxes, um, educational, and I would recommend it to everyone because it's a lot of programs and there's a lot of things that you can get in to, you know, to, to make yourself feel more better about yourself. Okay. Well, you can tell that Miss Loretta is clearly a member of the Bonds Corps family. We asked them about the language. How do you interact with your clients? They're like, no, they're not clients, they're family, and you can tell why. She said, we, and, and that gives you a clear indication that, that she feels like she's a part of a family. So thank you so much for and sharing your you. experience and sharing that with the people of Baltimore. And thank you. All right. We're here at the historic Dunbar Middle School, which is now the National Academy Foundation High School with Herrick Kofer, the advisor of the National Academy Foundation MeQ branch. Herrick, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me, April. Tell us about the mission of the National Foundation Academy High School and MeQ. Well, the mission of the National Academy Foundation High School is to bridge the gap between what students are learning and provide a high quality education and bridge that with what they're learning in the real world. Okay. And the mission here at MeQ, which we're bridging together, is to provide sound financial services through sound innovation and management. What is the difference between a credit union and a traditional bank? The traditional difference between a credit union and a traditional bank is a credit union is owned as a not-for-profit mm. organization that's owned by its members, mm. which means it generally translates into lower loan rates, uh, higher savings rates, and generally fewer or non-existent uh, service fees. How did this collaboration between the National Academy Foundation High School and MeQ come about? Well, the collaboration came about with the CEO, Bert Hash. He actually sits on the, on the board, the National Board for Financial Literacy. Mm -hmm. So he basically had a vision of uh, bringing in a credit union into Baltimore City Schools 
which mirrored a program that was located in Baltimore County. Mm -hmm. And basically our principal, Ms. Karen Endor Weber, mm -hmm. she heard about Bert Hash's involvement. She just had gotten assigned to National Academy Foundation High School. Mm -hmm. So she pursued Bert and together they planned from about October to about January, June, and then the branch finally opened in October of that following school year. So that would have been the 2008-2009 academic year, correct? Yes, ma'am. What do you hope the National Academy Foundation MECU collaboration will produce? I think this has been a highly successful collaboration. Currently, 20% of the student population, in the past, 20% of our student population has opened up accounts, hmm. while our goal for this year is for 33% of our student population to open up accounts. Currently, National Academy Foundation has 450 students, mm -hmm. which would make our goal to open up 150 new accounts. Mm. As well as, we also have four of our graduating seniors that have become seasonal employees with MEQ full-time. While they're going away to school, they also are guaranteed jobs when they come back for the summer and Christmas breaks. And we also have opened up one successful business account that our student tellers are running successfully. Currently, we have our 10 student tellers servicing 150 accounts. What is your role as an advisor? Well, my role as an advisor is to select and supervise the students that, we, that come into the Academy of Finance so they can be interviewed by Meek Youth Human Resources mm -hmm. to be an actual student teller. Also, I provide a bridgeway between what they're learning in the classroom with MeQ Branch, so they have a real world application now, as well as we go out and provide financial literacy seminars throughout the community. You're the director of the Academy of Finance. Tell us a little bit about that program and how it connects to what you're doing here with the MeQ Branch. The Academy of Finance is, uh, the students select the Academy of Finance in their temporary year, mm -hmm. and then we offer them four distinct pro classes in there, as well as a job shadowing opportunity mm -hmm. and a financial business in their temporary year, and the kids actually go out and work a paid internship in their junior year. Wonderful. So the current classes that we offer are personal finance, accounting one and two, banking credit, and financial applications. Here at the branch, we are, we're a credit union, but a lot of people think of the credit union as a bank. Mm -hmm. So our banking credit and financial applications course is where they learn about financial institutions and credit unions, and then we bridge that actual application in the MECU branch. What do you hope the National Academy Foundation MECU collaboration will produce? I hope it produces more financially literate students who can make more informed financial decisions, so therefore when they go back into the community, they can make, take part in making better wealth building decisions in the community. Herrick, thank you so much for sharing with us this example of how a financial institution can partner with an educational institution to produce great results with regard to student financial literacy. Well, thank you for having me, April. Veronica McFarland, a Hamilton resident and the parent of a National Academy Foundation MeQ account holder. Veronica, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me here. How did you learn about the National Academy Foundation MeQ branch? Well, I presently have a daughter who's attending this high school and um, she brought a paper home saying MeQ and I said that's an excellent idea. Mm. So I told her to join. How old is your daughter? What grade is she in right now? And why did you support her desire to open up an account at the MeQ branch here at the National Academy Foundation School? Well, my daughter is um, 15 years old and she's, this is her second year attending this school. And I encouraged her to save, just save your money, don't always spend it. How are you encouraging her to learn financial responsibility by using the account? Well, for one thing, when she gets some change or she gets a little job, set money aside. It's very important. You don't spend, spend, spend. You save for whatever might happen down the road. What changes have you seen in your daughter now that she's become more fiscally responsible? Changes I've seen is that she's maturing. Mm. She's coming into her own. I have a couple of dollars, Mommy. I'm just going to throw in a couple into the account and spend some. Would you encourage other parents to open up a National Academy Foundation MeQ account for their children? I recommend it because of you, the do your child is learning to save and you're watching over them, making sure that they just don't spend their money aimlessly on little things, earrings, this and that. It's okay, but get something better later on down the road. That's great. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us how you're teaching your daughter financial responsibility by allowing her to be a member of the MeQ branch here at the National Academy Foundation School. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. Oh.
Tyshawn Jones, a Park Heights resident and a senior here at the National Academy Foundation High School. He is also a student teller at the MeQ branch. Tyshawn, how are you today? Fine, are you? How and why did you decide to become a MeQ student teller? To practice and enhance my customer service skills. What skills are you learning as a student teller? Money management, money counting, and managing skills. How has this experience increased your financial literacy? It increased it a lot because when we had Money Power Day at Poly High School, I learned that I was learning stuff that people in their 30s and 40 year olds were just learning. What sort of things? Um, entrepreneurship, money counting, money skills, what, what, how to budget your money, how to get out of debt, how to manage your debt. How are others around you, your family, your friends, benefiting from you serving as a MeQ teller? They're benefiting a lot because I mess with my mother a lot and I ask her, what's her credit score? Oh wow, <laughs> you're asking your mom her credit score. Oh my goodness. She ain't goodness. tell me. But. And she didn't. <laughs> She didn't tell you, but she realizes that you know that that's yeah. important. How do you think this experience will help you in the future? It helped me to learn how not to do partnerships and how to also manage my money and how to become a bright businessman. What do you mean by that? Because partnerships are kind of like restaurants. They have a, a high fail rate. Do you think other schools would benefit from this experience? Yes, because everybody needs money management skills. Tyshawn, thank you so much for sharing your experience as a student teller here at the MeQ branch at the National Academy Foundation High School. And we wish you the best with your future. Thank you. We hope that you learned something today that will allow you to amplify your financial goals. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, we the people of Baltimore possess all we need to make our city thrive. With every thought, word, and action, each of us has the power to create the city we want. With this power, I hope you will always choose to amplify Baltimore.